Hello my friends! Today, I want to analyze a fellow YouTuber. He is still relatively unknown and his name is Beto. I'm just kidding of course, I'm sure 99% of you know exactly who he is. I'm not 100% sure if he was the first ever ML YouTuber I watched when I started to play ML. But he was surely one of the first I watched regularly. Now, with a lot more experience, I decided it's time to go back and see for myself if he's really that good like many people claim he is, or if he is just good at making good looking content. For that, I chose a couple of recent videos to analyze, so let's see what we can find. Also, let me know in the comments what you think about him. First, I checked his accounts and see all of his stats. For example, his recent Karina match, which will be analyzed in this video. While he reached Mythic 5 times, with his top score being 1335, two more and it would have been perfect, this season he only managed to reach Mythic 1. Although, considering that he only had 159 matches, with a win rate of 72%, and being 68 times the MVP, I consider this a really good effort still. Also, one thing I checked is if there are any names coming up multiple times since he's supposed to be the solo queue king. And from what I saw, I can confirm that he's playing all games solo queue, what makes the 72% win rate really impressive. Another thing I noticed while checking his stats was this number. His longest ranked win streak is 90. If I wouldn't know it better, I would expect some win trading here. So now that we went through some stats, let's get into the videos and analyze some plays. First we go through the latest game, where he plays Karina. The way he jungles in the early game is exactly how you're supposed to do it. And how I explained it, it might be a perfect jungler video as well. Keep the retribution for the Lethal Wanderer available, because like this, you get an early farm advantage. He also managed to get the first blood, which is easy with Karina, since she already deals a good amount of damage on level 2. Next I can say though, he's doing the wrong thing. Trying to save your teammates who clearly went for too much, as he said by himself, is waste of time. This bear wasted 10 seconds, which is in the early game a lot of time. The teddy bear would have been already cleared by now. Also, instead of fighting the lolly here, going after Alpha, who just tower dive would have been way more promising. He could also simply continue farming the red buff, because what happened now is that he couldn't contest the turtle, since he just reached level 4. Although the Zask and Selina didn't care for the turtle anyway, so in a situation like this it's better to keep farming than dying. Not really a mistake from his side. In the next fight he was a bit lucky to survive, but since he already got a second kill and an assist, with a godly flame shot from Zask, he could start to snowball now, which obviously didn't work out because of the failed gank bot. But this things happen to the best player in the world. I also love how the Selina and Tigreal are directly toxic. Don't be toxic towards your teammates please. Even if they are really noob, that will never help you to win any game. He could quickly recover though, with his third kill. Although I don't know why he tried to get the red buff here, instead of going immediately for the turtle. Luckily it worked out for the team and he got another kill and support, which is very good to build up his farm lead. Also that he backed out here instead of going for the kill himself is really smart. I also love how he praises the tank. He also continued to farm instead of recalling to the base, which is very good because he's not wasting any time and basically heals himself slowly with the jungle creeps, what leads him to get another kill and being quite fed at this point of the match, which is essential as a jungler to be effective. So, although I pointed out a few minor mistakes, he's doing an awesome job in this match until now. From now on, he just pick up kills left and right and also explains correctly that trading your life for the turtle is not worth it. I would have loved to see the gold difference right now, but as he also pointed out correctly, they don't have the game in the back yet, since they haven't took down any of his second turrets yet and the Kimi was farming a lot. Although again, I would have loved to see how much was the gold difference right now. Another thing I noticed is that he ignored his team taking the Lord here. This is the only habit from him that I really don't understand in this game. This is the second time where he prioritized the buff over the turtle or the lord. It still worked out and through the cuts you couldn't really see what happened while the team was taking the lord. But still, that's something I noticed. Next something happened to him that happened to me many times as well. His team started to throw the game and he decided to join the throwing party. The game is now in a stage where his gold lead from before doesn't really matter anymore because almost everyone has their full build now. So solo carrying at this stage is really difficult unless you play with a late game monster. And yes, at this stage Kimi is by far the biggest threat. Next you see a good example why you usually need the hero lock mode. Especially when your hero has skills that target a single enemy. Although he managed to kill Kimi here, 
In this skirmish, you could easily accidentally target Lolita for example, which would be horrible in this situation. Something like this happened to me a few days ago, where I targeted Saber's ult accidentally at the tank, instead of the enemy's MM, which made us lose the gank and the whole game. So he was lucky here. His team keeps making it difficult though, since Tigrid just died and they were in the 3v5 situation when the Lord spawned, which is basically a wasted Lord. Luckily the Bane was smart enough to finish the game, because his team was actually more likely to lose at this point. As I said already in many videos before, if you see a chance to finish a game, do it. So although I pointed out some mistakes, he still clearly was leading his team to victory together with a Bane. Next since I'm a 1-1 main, I wanted to talk about his game with my cat girl. And yes, I'm allowed to call her a cat girl, since 55% of you decided that she is a cat girl. One thing I notice is that he's using boots with her even in the late game, which is one wasted item slot, since once you have 3 attack speed items, you can just move forward with her passive. As someone who is not playing regularly with her though, I can understand if you don't do that, since it requires some adjustment. That he didn't build corrosion scythe though, really surprised me, since this together with demon hunter sword, I must have items for her. Anyway, he was quite lucky that his Onid chan was pretty noob and let him become really strong. A good Nathan can dominate 1-1 one -one in the early phase. Also, that he went to the gank when it goes to his side of the lane is good, because even when 1-1 one -one is still quite weak in the early game, when you play it safe, you can already have in ganks at this point. Now to the point where I would say that that Nathan is usually an epic player at best. Being in the range for 1-1's first skill is a really bad decision. If 1-1 can activate her ult, she can 1v1 any marksman on the lane. Also, you should follow his example to be proactive. Although keeping your lane safe should be your main focus, being proactive so your teammates are not forgetting you on your lane can be a really smart move. Because as you can see, the Kufa went directly top with him and could almost push the turret completely through. Almost. The curse of being a side laner. Sometimes you need a lot of patience because there's always an enemy showing up when you want to push. Luckily Beta also knows how to use 1-1's ult properly. Activate it on a slow target and wipe out the squishy enemies with it. Next a lot of kills followed, where I can't really say much other than he is playing her really good. But after he died here and I saw his build, I wanted to scream. No corrosion scythe, no demon hunter sword and no wind talker. For me as a 1-1 main, this build hurts just seeing it. I wonder where he got the idea for that build or if he made it for himself. With the correct build, he could already finish the game here easily. Well, nobody is perfect, right? The next gank also hurt my feelings. Not because he messed up or anything, but because the frozen effect is also my worst nightmare, together with wind of nature. Next, that he messed up his old here is of course costly. But again, something that can happen. Argus is a really good 1-1 counter actually, for obvious reasons. I also love how you can feel Beto's passive aggression here. I hate those teammates who doesn't understand the retreat ping. The next moment was just godly entertainment. Call an ambulance, call an ambulance, but not for me. So overall, apart from the build he used, another very good game from him. I would actually love to see a match from him where his teammates are just totally letting him down. Like this game for example. The next video I wanted to analyze is his top 15 heroes to solo rank up and see how the heroes he recommended turned out. Most picks were actually accurate, only that he recommended Paquito, who was almost all of the time on the top of the ban list was not ideal. Harley also fell out the meta quite heavily and if I remember correctly, he was already out of the meta at this point. But overall, he had many good choices. What brings me now to the conclusion. Is Bitoski really that good? In my eyes, he is really really good. Apart from a very few mistakes here and there, he's never the reason for a lost match, which is in my opinion the trait of a very good player. But I also have to say, he's no one with a 100% win rate, like some fanboys claim he is. Nobody in solo queue can be actually that good, because as I said before, if you have a win rate in solo queue over 60%, you are already really good. And even he has bronze matches, where his team just lets him down completely. Now tell me what you think about him in this video. And check out my last video, where I show you the 15 best heroes you can use to rank up solo in this season. Also, a huge shout out to my patrons Twisted J, Mist, Corbear, and Garo OP. If you want to support my work as well, here you have a link for the page. See you over there!